Hello Hans, welcome to the studio. Uh, today we will talk about the takeoff maneuver. Um, now you are a flight test pilot on a Cessna Citation aircraft. Um, and I would like to know that the takeoff maneuver is quite a dynamic maneuver, which takes a short time in which you have to perform a lot of actions. Um, if we assume that we're in a, in a calm day, so no wind or other uh, disturbing factors, could you explain which actions you actually take during a takeoff? Of course. We have um, uh, the aircraft. The aircraft is lined up on the runway. And we first have to wait for the, 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 the call from air traffic control that we have it cleared for takeoff. That's really important, of course. Then we, um, we push the throttles to the takeoff thrust. Uh, the aircraft will accelerate. We accelerate to the decision speed V1 and V rotate, at which we, we gently rotate the aircraft pitch up, and then we, um, then we climb further. And of course, the aircraft before takeoff, it's configured for takeoff. So the, the, the flap setting is in takeoff setting. And just after takeoff, we retract the gear and we retract the flaps. Okay, okay. And uh, as I understand, this, this decision speed is very important during the takeoff. And you actually call it out in the, in the cockpit, I, I understand. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit more about uh, the decision speed? What is it and why do we have to use it? Well, the decision speed is when you make the decision to either fly with a problem that you encounter or stay on the ground uh, with, that, um, uh, with that problem. And that means that uh, for it, it depends on all the standard operating procedures of, of the airliners, but they're roughly the same for all of them, is that up to a certain speed, in our case 70 knots, uh, you stop for all a problem, for example, a bird strike or, uh, or, or any, any light on your enunciator panel. Between 70 and the decision speed, you will, um, you will only stop for the, the bigger problems, like an engine failure. And after the decision speed, whether you have an engine failure or an engine fire, you're still going to take off. So that decision speed is important. So does that mean that the aircraft is fully capable of climbing out even with an, an engine on fire or a, a failed engine? Absolutely. Okay, well that's nice to hear, of course, um, but it's also uh, surprising maybe that with an engine failure you're still going to take off, even if you have a lot of runway in front of you. Yeah, that's true, because there's so much energy in the aircraft that if you would brake, then, then the brakes will get really hot and then you can blow your tires, and of course the end of the runway is near. Right, and it's difficult for you to compute on the spot how, how much distance you would require. We can't, and that's the reason why you, why you uh, c compute a, a decision speed beforehand, before you go to going to take off. Yeah. Okay, okay, and I guess this only holds for multi-engine aircraft. In, in the case of a single-engine aircraft, how would you then do this? Then, the, if the engine would stop, then you glide towards uh, uh, a spot where you can put the aircraft. Okay, okay, clear. Um, and one factor you mentioned is that you, uh, you rotate the aircraft during the takeoff. Uh, is there any variation in piloting technique? Well, the, the, the SOPs say you gently rotate uh, the aircraft towards uh, about 15 degrees pitch up, in my case, that will uh, result in 150 knots indicated airspeed. But of course, if you are really slow rotating, then of course you will use a lot of, mo uh, a lot of more runway uh, for takeoff, yeah. Okay, clear. Um, and one, uh, one thing I said at the start is that we're uh, assuming a calm day, no wind. But uh, I noticed that aircraft always take off with headwind. Uh, why is that actually the case? Well, you always take off with headwind because then the, uh, the, the runway you will use during takeoff is, 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 is less. And of course you will climb a little bit better compared to the ground. Okay, yeah. okay. And um, what you may also encounter during the takeoff is, is crosswind. Yeah. How does that affect your, uh, the takeoff maneuver? Well, at first, when you're speeding up, you're aligned with the runway. But, um, and let's assume that the, the, the crosswind comes from the left, uh, in, in my case, then uh, you will rotate. And, and soon, when the aircraft leaves the ground, so the, the wheels are not on the ground anymore, you will let the aircraft rotate into the wind because uh, then you're flying coordinated and that means that you're still following the path of the runway but you're now uh, uh, you have less drag if you're not flying coordinated you have more drag and that results in in in, in decreased climb performance okay so it's merely for the climb performance you will let the nose of the aircraft go into the wind 
Yeah, you always aim for coordinated flight. So yeah. yeah. And what do you have to do anything with the, the pedals in that situation? In that situation, you you need to do that because uh, when you are on the ground, you have in this case you have to have a little bit of right rudder in uh, in the aircraft to keep the nose aligned with the uh, runway. But of course, you center the pedals uh, as soon as you have uh, left the ground. Okay. Well, Hans, thank you for this nice explanation of the whole takeoff maneuver. Okay.